Trojan fans, welcome to the Peristyle Podcast on a Wednesday. This is a very, very, very special edition of the Peristyle Podcast. Why? Because the very first time we are broadcasting it live on YouTube. We've been simulcasting it. Uh, Chris Trevino and myself, he's alongside me right over here. Uh, for the last, I don't know, several weeks, couple months or something. Uh, but we're doing this one live. So if you are watching on our YouTube channel right now, uh, youtube.com slash Inside Troy, you can comment during the show and I will do my best to put your comments up on the screen and questions and things like that. We're going to go through our regular podcast. If you're listening on the Peristyle podcast feed, everything should sound pretty normal, except we're going to have some live interaction with people that happen to be watching us live on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions or comments, the more traditional route, you can email us podcast at uscfootball.com. That's the uh, email address. You can also call or text us uh, at 424-254-9141. And if you have the Apple podcasting app, hey, we appreciate you uh, listening there. But if you subscribe, if you follow us there on the Apple podcasting app and leave us a five-star review, it does help to grow the show. Chris, we got a new one from last week. Uh, I haven't read it for a while. This one, though, isn't about the show we're doing right now. It's about your show with Gerard Martinez, but it's Excuse from... Excuse me? Yes. Uh, five-star review. Thank you. From Pretty Boy Boogie. Uh, the subject is two-star. Love the information they provide. So that's uh, you and Gerard Martinez. G-Mart is legit. No, I'm sorry about this part, Chris. But Chris is kind of annoying most of the times. So pretty. he gave you a five-star, which we always say... Is that an actual review? That's an actual <laughs> review. Um so, well, I mean, fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. I, I'll i take the review. I'll take the review. Yeah, so the five stars, is that's really all we care about. We I do this a lot on the uh, Podcast of Champions. We say, insult us, say whatever you want. Just leave us a five-star review. It's like, these guys are both terrible. They don't know anything about Pac-12 football. That's fine. You leave the five-star review. Uh, we really appreciate that. That's what helps to to grow things. So I'm sorry that was a little shot at you, Chris. I didn't even warn, I didn't warn them before. Uh, I know you read that. That was my <laughs> first reaction. I can't re. I can't wait to do the same to Gerard when I read that <laughs> at the top of our podcast that we're f gonna film after this. So, so thank you, I guess, for the <laughs> review slash shade at me. Five stars for the two stars. I'll take it. Nice. Uh, but yeah, thanks for the reviews there and everyone else. Uh, thank you for listening and subscribing. You can subscribe uh, over at uscfootball.com for a dollar a month. Uh, definitely get all the insider information of what's going on with the program. The War Room every Friday is great stuff. Um, so we appreciate you doing that. You know, subscribe on our podcast channel and on our YouTube channel. All that stuff, we appreciate that. We also appreciate uh, Trader Joe's, our sponsor um, here at the Peristyle Podcast. They've been for quite a while. They've been a great uh, fan. I mean, they've been a fan of our show, you know, sending us in questions and things like that. Um, but also just, they've been a great partner to work with, uh, over the last several years. So, uh, appreciate them. Uh, Chris, I made dinner last night. I don't know if you've had, it's a lemon basil pasta salad. So I, I caught some halibut over in, uh, Catalina and froze it. And I come back, there's a slaw that I buy at Trader Joe's. It's uh, cabbage and carrot. And I saute that with a little garlic and butter. And then I cooked the fish uh, in that and it's really good, but I wanted a kind of a side dish and I didn't want to have to make something else. So I was like, Oh, this is cool. Prepackaged, uh, uh, you know, lemon basil pasta salad, and little bow ties and stuff. And that was a really good one. So, and I got a Brookies too. Like those, you know, you got to get the Brookies. You, there. you introduced me to the Brookies at one of the tailgates for last season's trash, trash season. Yes. It was, uh, trash season. It was the Brookies with a highlight. It was Drake London, the Brookies. <laughs> <laughs> that so yeah now that i go to trader joe's i seek them out i can't always find them oh, like yeah. not because they're sold out just because i don't physically know where they are all the time okay but yeah those are delicious so oh. you had yourself a meal fresh fish you caught what a flex it's, it's pretty good well i'd like to do that i'm going fishing this weekend i have to pull up to something excuse me so this is uh i, I don't know if you can see on the screen it's ubi mochi um so Ube mochi. So there's ube. Ube. I'm sorry. O ube mochi. So it's like this purple. It's like a yam. I think I might have mentioned this before. They're really hard to find. Uh, I had some friends, neighbors that really wanted them. It's like a pancake mix or waffle mix. Uh, they really wanted them. And I'd make a call over to our friends at Trader Joe's. And I got that. Like, it was, I guess they're super hard to find. Well, I'm in the store. It was yesterday. I was in the store. And there's just a pile of them. There's like stacked. High. So I was told limited time if you want the ube mochi like it's like this purple it makes you like purple pancakes and stuff um if you want that 
you got to go into Trader Joe's like soon because it's, it, you know, I, I went yesterday and there were tons of them, but there it's only for a limited time. So did you, you like, stock up? I bought a couple. Mm -hmm. uh, friends are like my friends that we we're going to do that. We want to do like a little waffle party again. We did that before. It was kind of fun. I don't know because they they like that stuff. But the fact that they wanted it and I could I got it for them. They were kind of impressed by that. So you know another low key flex when you can do that stuff. But thanks again, Trader Joe. Sorry that was a long thing. So we got a uh, interesting show. We'll try to you know I I listened to the show last week, Chris, and I was like that Chris guy is annoying. That's what you no <laughs> I myself I thought you had better energy than I did. I like in the beginning of the oh, okay. show I didn't feel like I had great energy. And some of it is like okay, so we're recording the show. Uh, we're co-hosting it. Um, I'm producing it and I'm like putting up different things on the screen. So I feel like I get, I can get distracted because there's a whole bunch of stuff going on, questions, comments, and things like that. So, um, my apologies. I wanted to bring more energy this week. So here I'm, I'm so here for you. You're apologizing I don't, off the rip. Cause I didn't have, I didn't have the right energy. Look, yeah. I don't know why you keep tormenting me. It was like, first let's do the podcast together. All right. I got it. Then it's let's simulcast it. All right, now I have to worry about people seeing my stupid face every week on YouTube. Now it's a live stream. What are you doing? I'm like expanding your horizon. In two weeks, you're gonna be like, I brought. I'm gonna bring in a live studio audience. That would you're be gonna, very cool. No, it would not be very cool. I'm putting up. So uh, if you guys are watching on um, on YouTube, I can put your comments up there. So we got some shout outs. Here's a shout out for for Chris. We'll put up there. Uh, so I'll try to monitor that. If you have questions, we're going to get to those mostly later, but I'll try to watch that. But again, another thing that sort of can be distracting because there's all these things going on. And uh, I'm easily distracted too, Chris, when there's especially a lot of stuff I got to do. Have you ever done a live podcast, like at an event? Yeah, uh, recorded in no, front no, no, of no. people. Live. Live. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. That's all That's all I wanted to know. Why? Would I you was just do that? No, I don't want to do that. I'm just, I'm just. I've done. I think for like Jake Olson's, I think that, but I think it was recorded too. I think most of those things are end up being recorded, but um, I, don't, I don't mind. I like, I like kind of doing this stuff. The only thing I was worried about is last week we recorded and I started to do the intro and my voice broke and it I gave like out, just ate something. So I had to make sure I was able to bring it the first time. Cause we're doing it live. Like you're, you can kind of get, um, you know, something. No screw ups. Yeah. We don't want any screw up and stuff. Okay. So we got a lot of stuff to get to on the show. So we'll kind of jump. Uh, right in. Oh, I'm sorry. Don wrote in um, about Trader Joe's. He said, you need to try the Florentine lasagna. So Don, I will check that out. Uh, thank you very much uh, for sending that in. Um, there's a couple of new additions to the roster. And we, if you checked out our war room last week, uh, we're able to clarify there's, you know, been a lot of turnover, right? There's been a lot of players that have uh, left early on. Uh, only one player, uh, Elijah Winston's left since um, spring football ended, but USC's added, was it up to seven or eight players now um, since uh, spring ball? Uh, so there's been a bunch of, you know, additions to the roster. I was able to clarify with some sources at USC to get the number down. So we do know we have the right number of scholarship players. There was a couple former walk-ons that were on scholarship last year and aren't anymore. Um, Micah Crew, the, the safety, and Mo Hassan. Uh, they're on aid, so they're still around um, the team, but they're not going to be on scholarship anymore. So that opened up a couple spots that we weren't sure of, uh, but we, we were told that nobody was, you know, has left the program after spring ball, you know, outside of uh, Winston. So there weren't some kind of secret people that just are off the roster now. Uh, at my count, and should be accurate because I was able to confirm it with, you know, sources at USC, uh, the Trojans are up to 82 scholarship players and that means three more left uh for uh, additional spots on the roster you know over the next you know coming weeks and potentially months uh before usc starts the season um i think he's getting very close to that double digit number uh chris that he was talking about post spring uh there was a couple like i mentioned a couple of roster spots that had moved uh, or, you know, players that had come off the scholarship count. So that opened up a couple spots, but only three left. So really it looks like right now, and we'll talk about the, the two new additions, but just overall, Chris, the kind of finishing touches it looks like are getting put on this uh, class right now by Lincoln Riley. Yeah, you feel like they're really sort of turning the page, closing the book on this sort of crazy, hectic 2022 sprint since Lincoln Riley came aboard, overhauling it, like you said, just a few spots left 
get those filled and then USC can really start looking ahead to 2023. You know, obviously it's June. We're in June now. So it's, they have that big, massive uh, recruiting, vi recruiting official visit weekend coming up. So, you know, close out 22 strong, get those final positions that you need. I mean, we'll probably, I mean, we'll talk about it, but I, I still think you need another defensive lineman, another offensive lineman. And that, in that last spot, you can do whatever you want with it. Close that out and then kind of focus on the high school recruiting over the next couple of months in the summer. Roll you into uh, summer PRP, summer workouts, fall camp, and then we're rolling again with the 2022 season. So we're, we're in a transition period because you're, you're getting out of that 22 to 2022 class, putting the finishing touches on it, moving forward for the season, the highly anticipated season. I mean, very highly. We said spring was highly anticipated, which it was. And I think it delivered. I don't think there was sort of false hype around it. I mean, just everything we were able to see in the spring. I thought USC, the coaches and the players, they all brought it. And then it was sort of like, whoa, now there's still, we're still not done. You know, there's, there's more additions to happen. Um, and two new ones uh, that we have from this week. Uh, one of the players we had talked about already, or I like to talked about in one of these videos when USC had a uh, official visit weekend, uh, but a cart. So the, the former Utah linebacker, who was only there for the spring, uh, Carson uh, Tabarici. You were, you guys were saying Tabarucci. Tabarucci. But it's Tabarucci, right? I yes. Be I believe that's Yes, how. we say it incorrectly for the bit. But that's okay. But you like that. You like saying that. Like we call uh, on the podcast of champions, Dan Lanning, Lan Danning, just that that's kind of what we do. But you like Tabarucci. Tabar you, have to, cool. you have to do the. I love it. Yeah. Um, so we put up a couple of photos of, of Carson there. Uh, like I said, Utah linebacker, um, any young, thoughts? young Utah linebacker. Yes. So technically I believe he's a red shirt freshman. I have him down. Let me look. He was a 2021 signee. So he's, he's a baby. I have him as a true freshman because okay. he didn't get to, he was only there for the spring. So that he doesn't have any eligibility. There you go. You're right. You're yeah. right. He hasn't used that, that's, that's how young he is. And I'll, I get all these years mixed up. Cause oh, I, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, I mean, he is a guy that comes into a position of need linebacker. And we've talked about how linebacker needs more depth, more talent, and, you know, someone else who can compete and push the guys there. He fills all those needs and he's young, just like a, you know, Eric Gentry. And it kind of takes the pressure off the 2023 class needing a, slam dunk linebacker class because they filled it with some young guys uh, like a Gentry and a Tabar Tabarici. And he's an athlete because, you know, he has some ability as, you know, possibly a running back, halfback kind of, kind of, kind of player. He, he, he was very effective as a runner in high school and, you know, he kind of could play on both sides of the ball. Will he get some time at, at, at halfback or on the offensive side of the ball? That remains to be seen, but he certainly has that potential. Uh, I, I feel like he's going to start out on the linebacker side. You know, you could move him to running back, sort of a running back. I say that maybe like a big fullback, halfback kind of kind of hybrid guy just because they only have three scholarship guys there, really coming in the summer in a couple weeks. But he's a guy who can play on both sides of the ball. He's an athlete. He's more athletic than people probably give him credit for. But he's a nice addition for that middle linebacker room and a guy who's obviously going to compete for playing time push that depth a little bit and make everyone better. Yeah, no, I agree with you there. Uh, like what, you know, the film I got to see of him and, you know, didn't really get, obviously wasn't going to be a contributor at Utah yet. So, uh, you know, a little more depth for USC. And I think there's just, there's options. You know, when you say depth, it's not necessarily meaning, okay, this player is just going to be, you know, second or third string sort of thing. I I think there's some positions where you just, you need some options. You need some, yeah. you know, some guys that come in there and they could be part of the rotation or, um, you know, they could be great scout team players or whatever it is. Just they the, had a safety move to linebacker. I mean, that's how sort of thin they were. Yeah. Now they've had, you know, fill that out. You also have Garrett Matt, uh, Garrison Madden coming in the, the, the summer as well. A guy you signed out of, out of Georgia, a speedy guy. That's another guy that's going to be on depth, could be a special teams player. So linebacker room has completely changed, you know, since the spring. So I mean, that was one of the weak spots. You could tell, I mean, Shane Lee, great. Raylan Goforth was playing really well. Rajon Davis is coming along uh, nicely at, by the end of camp, but you still need bodies, you still need options, as you said. And, you know, being depth doesn't mean like just being a fourth string guy. It's a guy who can push. And injuries happen, especially at linebacker. So, 
you're, you're knocking bodies, you're running into people. So it always is a good idea to have more more than less, you know. Right. You, do, you need more bodies out there. I need to do some sort of piece on, let's look at this roster um, from like November. Like what's, what was the, the roster for USC against Cal uh, mm. when Lincoln Riley was hired? And then what does the roster look like now? Like right. it would be night and day, right? So many changes. Uh, you know, Lincoln Riley talked about this being the most unique roster in college football history. And I don't, I don't think that's hyperbolic. I think he's, I mean, I think that's legit. Like there's legit going to be so many changes to the roster. And I, I know I hear a lot of like national podcasts. I hear people, there's some people that are like, yeah, USC is going to be good right away. And that's kind of the way I'm leaning, Chris. Like I'm just leaning that way a little bit more. And there's some people like, oh, you're, they're only adding like skill players. Jordan Addison can't block, you know. I feel like if you if you remember back when Lane Kiffin took over and had those sanctions thrown on him, I thought he had a really good plan. Like you had like, how are you going to recruit with only 15 scholarships? You only got 75 total. He came up with a plan, and I thought the plan was was good. You know, it, it seemed like it made sense. Like, okay, that's how you got to do things. And you started blue shirting or whatever. I think Sark started doing some of that stuff. You got to get feel, creative. Yeah, and I feel like Lincoln Riley got very creative, uh, came up with a plan. And it wasn't just adding bodies. It was adding, you know, quality, difference maker kind of players in a lot of spots. So I, I'm a little more optimistic on what he's been able to do with this roster. You're ready to dive in. I, I'm You're ready to go. USC National Championship 2022. You're ready. I can see it. I don't know about that. Come uh, on. I do, do have it. some actual rose colored glasses that oh, I got okay. at, that uh, I wore. Like I was at a wedding this weekend or at a wedding this weekend. And I got to wear those. Um, I could have wore them for this. Like New uh, York Six Bowl? Yeah. No, I think that's very possible. Um, the, the rule change, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. The rule change in the Pac 12, I think, gives USC even a better shot to win the Pac 12 this year. That if you happen to lose to Utah and Salt Lake City and you still have the second best record in the conference, you get another shot at them if they win the conference uh, in Vegas at a neutral site. So, yeah, I got some optimism there. One of the other um, spots that USC kind of needed to fill because, you know, the Trojans only had two scholarship quarterbacks. Uh, you know, Mo Hassan isn't on scholarship anymore, but he's probably not going to be available for the beginning of the year. I mean, we're hopeful, like he's hopeful. I know there's a lot, you know, they have optimism in his camp that he's going to be able to come back, but that's, that's but a pretty Achilles quick turnaround. Yeah. It's just brutal. It's tough. Uh, and you can potentially do it, but to, you know, he wouldn't have any fall camp. He's, you know, all that stuff would be gone. Um, so they needed to bring in uh, a quarterback at some point, but you couldn't bring in, you're not going to bring in like, a guy that expects to start or anything like that. Um, so it was an interesting, uh, you know, I guess direction that they went. I think you kind of, you know, it makes sense when you talk about a guy that was at BYU, but also in the, the JUCO ranks, uh, Jake Jensen. Um, Great name. Yeah. You like, I like that one. Uh, we'll put up a couple of photos. JJ. If JJ, if you're watching on YouTube, what do, what do you know about uh, Jake Jensen, Chris? Yeah, obviously another JUCO guy. And, you know, USC hadn't really been hitting the JUCO market, uh, you know, since they brought in Nick Figueroa in 2019. It seemed like the transfer portal kind of killed the JUCO market a little bit. But here we go. This is his uh, Lincoln Riley's third JUCO pickup, along with uh, Cooper Lovelace, who we talked about a couple weeks ago, offensive lineman. And then Garth White, the JUCO punter slash kicker. So... There's talent in the JUCO ranks, and J Jensen is an interesting guy because he originally committed to BYU out of high school. He is Mormon. He decided to take that mission, that two-year mission that a lot of those uh, those Mormon guys take out of high school. COVID obviously got in the way of that, just screwed up the timeline a little bit, ended up going to uh, Contra, Costa, Contra Costa College and played pretty well. I think he had close to 2,000 yards passing, 22 touchdown, passing touchdowns. Also ran for about 212 yards and four more scores. So he's got some uh, dual threat ability. That's sort of the, the the mold of quarterback that fits Lincoln Riley's offense. Took a midweek official visit. Ended up committing 24 hours later. So this feels a big need. And I love dunking on all those people that a couple <laughs> months ago they were like, number three quarterback isn't isn't a big deal. You don't really need a number three quarterback. Well, you can suck on an egg because obviously <laughs> – <laughs> it was it was it was an issue and it was a need that you know us uh lincoln went and spent some time to recruit a quarterback to fill that need 
And as someone who lived through a Maryland season where we literally lost every quarterback on the <laughs> roster and we're starting a GD linebacker for like the final three games, quarterbacks matter. And Gerard has mentioned this as well. The third string quarterback is your scout team quarterback. So if you've got a guy who's five foot five and is like a real walk on, your defense isn't really getting that good of a look. You want a scholarship arm to be your scout team QB. For yeah. your scout team offense, because that's going to make them better throughout the week. Going into Saturday, you're facing a guy who can't throw 40 yards. How's that going to help you, Ryan? How's that going to help you? So it fills a multitude of things, especially with the depth, especially with the scout team offense. And if you want to debate me on the 13th quarterback, see me in the DMs. <laughs> see me. I'm having a day. I want to fight with somebody. So come at me. Do it right now. So Chris is having a day because I made him do a live podcast. Yeah, he's not really happy about that. I'm so. I'm not happy about that. I'm going to take it on some poor freaking <laughs> sap right now. So a big pickup, maybe not. You know, it's not flashy as like an offensive lineman or defensive tackle, but it was a position of need. So Jake Jensen, JJ, JJ. I thought I had a nickname. Nope. So JJ, he's sorry. on the team. Big pickup. They actually officially announced him like an hour before we went on this. So it's official. Coming in the summer. Oh, they did? Yeah. It, USC tweeted out officially. Like, so he signed. Oh. He's in. He's in. He's enrolled. Whatever. And, yeah. Excited to see what, he, he, what he looks like. he had signed with New Mexico, right? Or Yeah. Or I think he was uh, committed there uh, initially. And then, obviously, Lincoln Riley was like, nope. I want you. Boop. I'm going to take you. I'm, I'm going to take you for for my depth chart. And he has three years He has three years left. So I And a red shirt. So and a red like, shirt. So yeah. he's got time. Will he be a guy that starts here? Probably not. But... He's, he could be a guy that can develop. Maybe he hits the grad. Maybe he hits a you know the grad transfer portal later, and he could be a starter somewhere else. But to learn under Lincoln Riley and play on this USC team, as I said, and getting a USC degree, that's that's enticing enough, you know. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you, and I think, and I, I mean, no offense, I'm sorry to the current USC walk-on quarterbacks. Like if we're watching practice, it just seems like there's like. I mean, they're like kind of these short guys that they're, they're not going to bring wow. what you need to the wow. table. Right? You, just, you I, just lost all the short guys in our comments. No, like you just, just lost 50 guys. Uh, just, you just lost 50 viewers. They, they're walk-on quarterbacks. I mean, they don't look like guys that could come in. But like, it, you know, even like a Mo Hassan who came in as a walk-on quarterback, he transferred in. I mean, he was like he, six foot three. He started a game in the SEC. No, yeah, yeah so I'm saying like that was like a legit a, a walk-on that like earned a scholarship and all of that. Um, so I'm sure that's going to change. That's going to be one of the things you watch in the roster too. Like, does the quality of the the walk-ons actually get better because you know you have like this you know a, a great coaching staff that you can learn from? Well, um, yeah, I mean they have two really good incoming preferred walk-ons. I'm blanking on one, but Gage Roy being one of them, a couple guys uh, that you know maybe if they were a couple inches taller, they'd be uh, Division One quarterbacks, yeah. Power Five quarterbacks. So. Yeah, Lincoln's going to recruit those preferred walk-ons. He was a walk-on, so he has a soft spot for them. So he's going to try to find the best ones that he can. I think they're upgrade to the current batch of walk-ons they have now. So I don't think you got to worry about you know the the caliber of QBs that are going to be coming into USC over the next how many years? Yeah, I mean, there's just some kid that's like going to be like an all-league quarterback somewhere in Texas who threw for like seven thousand yards in a season, and but he's, he's too like, short. Or, or something. Or something. Just, he's not going to, like, I'd rather walk on in USC or whatever. And um, you're going to see some more stuff like that. So that'll be cool. Uh, we got to talk about the schedule. So we do have, I know we get a lot of questions about television times. And for the most part, you're not going to find out for the majority of the games when those TV times are. But four of the 12 games have been announced as far as television times go. And I will go through them. One by one, USC released them. Uh, first, USC's opener. It's the home opener. It's the Lincoln Riley opener, Lincoln Riley era opener. Uh, they're playing Rice uh, on September 3rd, 3 p.m. on Pac 12 Network, Pacific Time. So the first game for USC and Lincoln Riley is on Pac 12 Networks. Not a huge fan of that, but USC opens the season with a Rice, and that's you know going to be one of the ones you're going to probably have to put on the Pac 12 Network. So I kind of get that, but I'd as rather... someone mentioned, it gets them being on Pac-12 Network out of the way early. True. Um, on a game like USC is favored by like forty in that game or something, like the early line. So if you're going to be on the Pac-12 Network, that's probably one you'd want to be on. But but don't worry, it's going to be on ESPN highlights. 
Yeah, there, people are going to be like, here's Lincoln Riley. This is the <laughs> offense. Here's Caleb Williams. Oh, Caleb Williams to Jordan Addison. Oh, Caleb Williams to Mario Williams. And I can see it now. Caleb Williams threw for four touchdowns. Jordan Addison, they're getting along well and out there in Southern California. It's gonna, yeah. You're going to see that on ESPN. There's going to be some top 10 plays probably. What was the – I saw – I think we put the – spread somewhere it was like in the high 30s or something or 35 or something like that i believe for this game like the early line are we gonna do picks again like we did l last year oh we'll definitely do picks <laughs> at um, least it'll be more fun why what was enough fun because then? well last year was just like oh they were just god awful <laughs> just, yeah. just like terrible but then you're so you're debating like can usc like you would never like if usc was favored by like 21 against rice last year you're like uh, no give me no, rice. No, no, like, no, no. they could it could be a close game um yeah, I mean, I kind of feel like the opener, like Lincoln Riley's going to make a statement. Mm -hmm. They're going to score a ton of points. So right now, I'd be laying that 30-whatever. Um, that would be my initial okay. thought, which I don't pick USC to cover a lot. And I was did really well, well it's by doing Well, a new era. That. New era, it's like new I'll era. probably pick them to cover some of these <laughs> things. So we'll see. I could be wrong. Um, September 10th, so this is the first road game. At Stanford. Pac-12 opener, baby. Pac-12 opener, week two. That's going to change under George Klyovkov. But as for now, it's going to stay. Uh, USC at the farm, 4.30 p.m. Pacific. And that's on ABC. So that's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. I like the time slot, especially for us that cover it. It's not too late. We're not going to get out there like crazy late, like 3 a.m. or whatever. It's going to be a, right. a decent time we get out of there. So I'm okay with that. And I like the Stanford trip. I like... I, I, I'm probably alone on that and liking Stanford's like stadium or whatever, but I, I like the Stanford uh, road trip. Okay. Yeah. So. The weekender is a big one and people really enjoy that. And uh, we, we, I mentioned something on the website and I'll give you guys more details later, but go over to uscfootball.com. We're actually, we're pairing up with this travel company and we're going to provide uh, an opportunity for USC football fans to travel to the weekender. And here's another reason Chris is probably not going to like this trip because we're going to have a chalk talk on Friday night uh, in San Francisco. And me, hopefully Chris. So I have to go. So Chris could be make an appearance. You could see us live talking about the Trojan football team. We got a couple former players lined up too. And I haven't told anybody this yet, but we can do it since we're doing this live. What the heck? Not like paperwork hasn't been signed, but the two uh, former players that I've reached out to that have agreed to come up there and speak. Uh, and then we're going to have like a tailgate and everything. So you'll have, it'll, the package will include hotel, uh, like a chalk talk. There's like open bar, a little bar crawl thing on Friday night through San Francisco, but we'll have the chalk talk. And then uh, transportation from San Francisco to Palo Alto to the, for the game on buses. And then like a four hour tailgate, like all you can, you know, it's, it's open everything. So should be a lot of fun. Hopefully we get a bunch of people to kind of go, but uh, former USC quarterback number, number two in the uh, Heisman balloting Roddy Pete said he would come and uh, speak to the fans and a fan favorite uh, from the Pete Carroll days, Lendell White, uh, who's, yeah, I guess he just started his own podcast too. So we're going to try to get him uh, on this show. Um, you know, I'll interview him one-on-one, -on -one, whatever it is. And uh, Lendell White though, we've had him on before. He's great. Just tells how it is. Uh, I think the, the Randy Troy people remember when Randy Troy used to do a podcast when th those people, you remember them? I just want shade at everyone. I'm just today. throwing some shade. Uh, they used to use the drop that when I had Lendale on, he said, you know, he said something about Vince Young's knee being down and they love that drop. So they would play that a bunch of times. So uh, in that championship game, but that's, as of right now, it's not, you know, it's still early. We haven't like signed all the paperwork and stuff, but, um, and uh, we have handshake agreements, virtual handshake agreements with, uh, with those two. So it should be a lot of fun. You can hear me, you can hear Chris. Uh, I don't know if shotgun's going to come, but you get a couple, couple former players um and tailgate and check out the the band up and you know it's i don't think it's in union square this year uh but you know we, we should have a lot of fun in san francisco friday night learn some stuff about the team and go forward so I'll, uh and it's a great it's a great time for tailgating 4 30 p.m right like great time because it's a four we have a four hour tailgate so like you're starting just after noon you get some food in you you get some noon you're getting there at 10 you're setting up you're having some emotions. Well, we don't have to set up. We're like, we're getting. Oh, us. We, we, I'm, I'm just talking like in general, like right. a general person, not part of this, uh, this four hour but tailgate. Our tailgate's going to be, yeah. So, but you want to get. You're going that. hard this year, right? <laughs> you're going hard this year. Yeah. Uh, I you're don't gonna, think it's a mimosa tailgate because it's like 1230. So much public speaking. Look, <laughs> hopefully, one, I'm not having to cover a high school game. No. Oh. You, you get out of that. Because you got to be. Because you're the boss. 
Yeah, man. We got like Gerard will be like, why aren't you going to the high school game? Because he's speaking to the Trojan fans Look, here. I will go if we get someone in these Facebook comments or YouTube comments to uh, to to agree to buy me a drink. It's, it's all you can drink. You, you're drinking for free. But if you want them to buy you a drink, sure. No, I want someone to commit to buy me a drink. Okay. Uh, or I, at least order me the drink. So put in the comment. I'll put it up there. Um, yeah, no, they got to buy you the drink. That's, Otherwise, that's I'm going to a high school game. I'm going to go watch some kid play All right. on Friday night. Uh, week three, September 17th, uh, Fresno State. Jeff Tedford back in the Coliseum. You remember him? Battling with Pete Carroll over the years, Aaron Rodgers. I don't remember Marshawn that, Lynch. Sure you don't they remember do. that stuff. <laughs> I don't. Well, he's back, that. but he's with the Fresno State Bulldogs. Is that with the, the the cart? Marshawn Lynch in the cart. Is he that, was that was a yeah, Pacal, okay. yeah. Um, Seven thirty p.m. Uh, on Big Fox. So a couple of good games. ABC Week Two for USC Stanford and Week Three hosting Fresno State. Seven thirty p.m. Uh, Fox. Big Fox night game. I, I mean, some people get upset at night games. I don't mind the night game. I thought I thought this could be kind of cool. Fresno State could be fun. Um, you're gonna have a pretty big audience. People are gonna watch what USC is able to do in this one. I would think. And I, you know, I don't think Stanford's very good. I think USC is very likely two and zero heading into this one. Um, do you like this this time, Chris? Just from like a media standpoint, no. It's gonna be a late one, but. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Okay. I'm fine with like those 7:30 starts at at home. Those are those are cool. Those are fine. Those are uh, those are delightful. Uh, that those get a lot of people. You know, because you know people are are tailgating all day. You've had several hours of being out, hanging out, having a good time, and yeah, big game on Fox. So it should be a fun one. Night game can't pass up a night game. You know, when the lights are off, always fun. Um, hold on, I got to put this question, this uh, oh, no. comment up for you, Chris. Oh, no. uh, for me, from Anthony. I don't have my glasses I'll, on, so I can't see anything. Yeah, well, it's so. very far away for you. Um, Chris is Chris is over there. Yeah, I, oh, you can see where Chris is. So nope, still can't. Uh, Chris can't see my screen right here because he's you know over there. He can see me at least when we're talking. Like I'm talking to Chris, but I'm looking forward, and I yeah, he's you, over there. So that's a little. It's harder. Like give me the cold shoulder. Yeah, I'm like ignoring him. But Anthony said, "I'll buy you a ten thousand dollar value drink." LOL. So not eighteen k, not eighteen k. No, not like your tattoo. It's an actual ten <laughs> k. Um, so we have we have confirmation. You don't have to do the high school game. All right, Anthony. <laughs> I'm going to be shouting out Anthony. Anthony, Anthony. where are you? Uh, perfect. Okay, and then there's one other game later in the season. Uh, week uh, 10, well, U USC's 10th game. Friday? Uh, it's a uh, November 11th, Colorado, 6.30 p.m. Uh, Pacific time on FS1. And that is the Friday game that USC is in. So... You know that one because, you know, Friday games aren't going to start at noon or anything like that. So 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, Colorado coming to the Coliseum uh, will be shown on FS1. Uh, leave work after lunch if you want to get to the game on time because, uh, you know, LA traffic is going to be bad. Which that's always the problem with Coliseum Friday right. games. Right. That's you know. going to be brutal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you'd rather it be like 7.30 or something just. So you could like get a chance, like if people are going to leave work and then go, but like, you know, I don't know where you can leave. That's a late arriving crowd. Oh, definitely. It's, and it's, it's not going to be hop until the second quarter. Right. The game, the game might be over by the second quarter. Let's be honest. It, it, yeah. I think Colorado is, is pretty terrible too. So of at least the times that we know, I think USC has a pretty good chance of, uh, of winning all those games. So that's, uh, that's a pretty good thing. Yeah. I, I think Colorado is going to be really Stanford and Colorado are going to be really, really bad. Um, and I'm not sure how Washington's going to be, but USC misses Washington and Oregon. And, you know, Oregon's going to probably be the class of the North. But, you know, you could see a Washington State. You could see an Oregon State. Potentially a Cal. Not the, not the North. The not North. The, not the class of the North. There's no more divisions. Well, there, there's a division <laughs> still. But there's just, it doesn't matter. The division doesn't matter for, there's still a North. But there there's no, like. But it has no meaning. I guess you could still win the North, but if you don't have the second, first or second best record, then it, you know, you're like Pac-12 North champions, but you're not playing in the championship game. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to call it, but they haven't like said divisions are gone because they haven't changed the schedule model and stuff yet. But yeah. 
Uh, okay, let's go to, we have, uh, so there was, a, let's do this kind of real quick, because it, it was involved a bunch of USC players. You were at the Clarkson, was it quarterback retreat uh, this week? Clarkson's QB retreat, yeah. The okay. annual big Steve. Adidas kind of flashy QB uh, thing. And me and Gerard were there. We're gonna break down. We're gonna break it down more in detail on the Two Star Podcast. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it was obviously a very star-studded event. You had Caleb Williams there. Jordan Addison was there. Mario Williams was there. Malachi Nelson, the five-star 2023 quarterback that's committed to USC, was there. There were stars all over the field. Uh, Heisman winner Bryce Young, he was chilling out there. Uh, C.J. Stroud, uh, Ohio State's uh, Heisman contender, he was out there. B. John Robinson, legs looking like giant hams, Christmas hams. He was out there <laughs> hanging with them. It was like, so Bryce Young, C.J., B. John, Caleb. That's like four of the five top Heisman contenders going to the season, including yeah. defending Heisman winners. So stars galore out there. It was a cool event. Um, only went for one day. Parking sucked <laughs> it was at like this middle school in santa monica so you know the parking was terrible you know it's bad when i when i watched like uh uh matt leinart have to park his car two blocks away and walk in i was like i have no hope so <laughs> if he that guy wasn't parking in vip no one had any hope so <laughs> it was cool you know jordan addison kind of low back let low key kind of chill attitude caleb obviously the personality coming out mario williams personality coming out Cool to see them interact with each other. They look like they've been playing together for like three years already. That that's sort of like how connected they were and kind of how like easygoing it was for them. So that's a good sign, especially you know when it comes to chemistry and those being probably is going to be his leading receivers uh, for next season. Yeah, uh, but we put a bunch of content up from that. Gerard put up a video and everything, so you can go check it out on uscfootball.com. And Chris and Gerard were both there. They'll talk about more of that on the uh, Two Star Recruiting Podcast. So make sure you check that out. Um, that's all the topics we had. We got a bunch of questions we want to get to, but this was, I want to pull this one up. Touchdown USC says, what's the low cost alternative to watch the Pac-12 network? This comes a lot. And since we we're just talking about that. Legally uh, or illegally? Uh, I don't do the illegal part. Um, Are you I winking? Do, huh? Are you just wink? No. I oh, I wink. thought you were doing, I no. thought you were doing a wink. I can't see, I, don't do I, can't see your, I can't see your left eye. Ah, no. It was, I uh, thought you were doing a, uh, no, uh, I do the Sling TV. Um, so I think. I so just DM, like, DM Ryan. He'll give you your, his login. I don't even know if that works <laughs> anymore. I think I still have it. I should I should cancel it until I think I should cancel it the next couple of months. YouTube TV Is doesn't it, have it. YouTube TV does not okay. have the Pac-12 network, which I use. Uh, I like YouTube TV. Um, I use YouTube TV. YouTube TV sponsor us. Yeah. Good. Why don't you guys sponsor us? That'd be great. But it would be better if you had the Pac-12 network, too. George Klyovkov, you got to get on that. It'd be better if the Pac-12 network was better. If it didn't stink. <laughs> uh, you mentioned B. John Robinson, too. He got a, a sponsorship deal with Lamborghini, an NIL deal. And it wasn't, like, through Texas. It was apparently, like, Texas had some kind of, like, re event. And I think it was his roommate that, like, reached out. Like, they're, like uh, there was something about, like, all speed, like, all in. Like, oh, some kind of theme. And they invited, like, local car dealers. I guess, like, the Lamborghini guy was there. And they asked... You know, the, like, I guess Robinson's roommate asked the guy, he didn't know anything about college football, didn't know anything about NIL, and like, oh, this makes sense. And they like came up with a deal. He gets like a Lamborghini for a year uh, to drive around. So I hope his roommate gets something out I of it. I know, like, let him drive it or let something. It, let but, him take a date out on the town with, in a Lambo. But, but and, and apparently, like, Texas had like nothing to do with it, but they kind of get the benefit of, uh, you know, like, oh, yeah, we got our, we got our due to Lamborghini. Texas deal. had nothing to do with it. Are you winking again? No, no. Okay. Winking. No, I think that literally his roommate <laughs> talked to a guy. Like the guy, the, the Lamborghini guy didn't know what okay. his college football was. So it wasn't like okay. there was some like thing through okay. Sark that he set up. Sorry, no something, in my, something in my eye. I'm sorry. There's no winking. Uh, I didn't see a Lambo at Santa Monica Lincoln Middle School, you know? So maybe he maybe he didn't bring it over. No. Uh, all right. Well, why don't we uh, take a quick break and we'll come right back um, and... Uh, answer a bunch of your questions back in a minute. All right, we're back here on the Pistol Podcast, uh, being broadcast live 
on our YouTube channel. The uh, horror. Yeah, crazy. If you're watching on YouTube, there wasn't really a long break there, but we take a little break uh, for our podcast listeners and want to get to uh, some of your questions. Um, if you have questions that you're watching live, I will try to monitor that. Um, so here, there's one here. Why don't we just put this up and uh, we'll check it out. We'll start with a YouTube question, but I'll, I'll go through our email questions and stuff uh, also. But Kevin Randolph says, uh, the best year of out-of-state recruitment was 2004 with only five guys. Over under Lincoln Riley, five out-of-state kids for the 2023 and 2024 classes. Over under five? Yeah. So is that – does that count like West Coast states? Like is Arizona count? It sounds like he's – yeah, I know. Like, do, is he is he still in the comments? Is he watching? He can clarify. But yeah. I would not consider like Arizona part of that. First of all, yeah, because it seems like that's kind of like that'd be kind of. I wouldn't even consider Utah part. Uh, I would consider Utah part of that like that backyard of USC. So I guess he, I'm he's uh, sort of considering sort of like like out of like, the like region Florida. Or DMV, Midwest, the South. That's what I feel like he's. Uh, referring to Texas, um, over under, they already have two with the two running backs. Yeah. You know, you're recruiting uh, Nicholas Harbour out of the DMV really hard. You get Brandon Innes. He's from Florida. That's four right there. Uh, you know, Francis Mauga. Are you, do you count him as, because he's a SoCal native, but he's out of Florida. So it's technically an account I think of you Florida. Would count. Yeah, I think we count. You're, you're recruiting some linebackers out of, out of uh, Louisiana, Tackett Curtis. Uh, recruiting he some says big... Pac-12 footprint. So out of the Pac-12 footprint. Out of Pac-12 footprint. I'll take yeah. the over. I just, talk, over. I, just, I just talk myself into it just because like, of the guys that are recruiting out of Louisiana, out of Texas. I already have two. They just need to get, I guess, four more to take the over or five. Are we uh, good at five? I it, don't know betting. <laughs> Over under five. If he gets five, I don't get it, right? Uh, five would be a tie. So That's he okay. needs six. So he needs yeah. four. I will take it. All right. I will take it. I mean, I, I think that makes sense, especially when you have a coaching staff coming from uh, pretty much all of them uh, outside of Dante Williams are coming from out of state. You're probably going to get some out of state guys in that first class. So Yeah, you can get easy a couple de defensive backs. You get some of those of those offensive linemen you're recruiting out of Florida. You get Brandon Ittis out of Florida. You get Tackett Curtis out of Louisiana. Yeah. Look, I talked myself you're, into it. You're I'm getting into Yeah. Uh, and really only one, um, you know, really only one other coach that was from the Pac-12 footprint, right? Like um, Kyle McDonald coming mm -hmm. from Utah, right? That's the only other one that's from the footprint. So, you know, you got guys. And he's got two from Texas, so. Yeah. So I think uh, you're going to get, I think that's the overs are good there. We got an email from uh, Mao. Uh, any word on Keaton Christen uh, situation? Did he leave or portal out? And uh, yes, he's been in the portal for a while. Uh, officially now as p part of San Diego State. Going back home. He is a San Diego native. So I think that's a good fit for him. Hopefully they can be a school that utilizes all that speed that never really got to be uncorked at USC for whatever reason. They didn't want to use him like that. So I'm excited to see. Hopefully, he becomes a focal point for that offense. Um, you know, they had a really good uh, running back a couple years ago, Rashad Penny, who was a first-round draft pick, I believe. So hopefully, they can you know make him into sort of that uh, do all back. And I'm hoping for for big things out of him. Obviously, did not really uh, go well at USC, and obviously no. had the 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 whole off the field stuff, and with the you know, and you can argue that. He was should have been allowed back on, but that's a whole nother can of worms. But so fresh start back home, San Diego. Hope it goes well for him because I've known Keenan a while. So since uh, they started recruiting his junior year, so hoping for for some good things for him. Yeah, the LA Times did some reporting on that. Like they did a story. It, it, you know, at least from their story, it made it sound like it was pretty much cleared. Uh, there was a you know misunderstanding. It didn't last very long. The two. People that were involved, Kristen being one of them, you know, shook hands and moved on. And, uh, you know, it, it, the, the, he wasn't uh, suspended anymore, but they really weren't. It didn't seem like they wanted him as part of the football team. And that's, you know, that's been happening, right, Chris? Like we've, you know, there's been a lot of guys that were 
for whatever reason, the new coaching staff didn't feel they were a fit. When you take over as a new coaching staff, you do have, um, as a coach, a head coach, you can essentially cut players and you can say, all right, um, you're allowed to stay in school. You can finish your degree. We will pay for it all, but you're not going to be on the team. You're not going to be, uh, you know, using one of our scholarships for the actual roster. And uh, it sounds like, you know, Keen Kristen was one of those guys. Um, I think in the story, you know, the, the LA Times story he talked about, it didn't seem like he was wanted. And so that's why he went to the portal. And, you know, it's going to happen. We don't know why. I mean, there's, there's you know, Lincoln Riley is changing the culture. I think he definitely identified some people that for whatever reason, they didn't want to be part of the future of this program. And for the most part, th those players that were um, exempted and you know, said, hey, we're going to put you on aid um, and, you know, you can stay if you want. Uh, the majority of those players actually went into the portal and they transferred somewhere else. Um, so that's sort of like where USC is uh, right now with, with Kristen. It just, for whatever reason, the new coaching staff was not, uh, you know, all that high on, on him coming back. I know he was a fan favorite because of the speed. And all that stuff. People love to see how fast he would run. But, you know, he's going to San Diego State. State champ. Yeah. State champ in the 100. So he's going to San Diego State now. And uh, you wish him the best. Like, you know, Chris said, Chris has known him for a while. Good kid. Uh, we have an email from Alex. Uh, Does a high school football player have the option to go directly to the USFL? Have you watched much USFL? I haven't like to hardly Yeah, watched. my brother loves to troll me about it, like, Want to watch some Pittsburgh Breakers? Big yeah. game this week. I think I the like Pittsburgh Breakers it. are bad. Yeah, I don't even know if that's the real name. No, I, well, I don't know what they are. The Pittsburgh... They you, might be, you could make it up. The Tampa Bay Maulers. I, it might be the Pittsburgh... I don't know, but whatever. Pittsburgh, I think I saw on the screen it, they were like one and six or something. Like, that's not very good. I'm, you know, that's where I'm from. The I'm Cincinnati. actually going to see the Dodgers and Pirates tonight. That has no relevance to the US. Pittsburgh. Oh, you just wanted a flex thing. Okay, I guess, but... The Cincinnati Crush. Yeah, the Cincinnati Crush, they're really good this year. I don't know. They're all <laughs> playing in Birmingham. Anyway, Alex wants to know, does a high school player have the option to go right to the USFL? If so, which would be the better prep uh, for the NFL? Three years of college or three years of USFL? For that matter, which pays more, USFL or college? College has to pay Fight better. Fight on it, Alex. 100% Alex. Like, I think college would probably pay better. That is if you're a star, but also... I mean, you don't get the same experience in the USFL. Like that's for like no one's you, watching the USFL. I don't think. And like, how long are they going to be around? Like, if you literally left, I don't know if you legally like if you, I. You, I think for professional football, you still have to be out of high school for three years because I think the USFL has alignment with the NFL, right, or something. Um, I don't think that it's allows. An interesting you. question. It's an I, interesting question, but I don't think so. I don't know the answer. I'm I can gonna, uh, do a quick Google search. Solve for me. Uh, I will still, yeah, here, let me, I'll, I'll even take you off the screen, Chris. I never put myself on the... Uh, yeah, I know. You. I see it all the time. I was like, gosh, Chris, when you talk, it, you get just... to put you on it. But like, so like, I don't do this as much um, for just putting me, but Chris is going to Google this right now. I, I think you're taking a big risk, right? If you're leaving high school and you, you want to be a professional football player, you just don't want to go to class. I think you're going to have a much better experience at a big college than you would in USFL. I think all the teams are down in like Birmingham. Um, it's great. You know, I, I think it's a great option. There's college players that you've heard of. It's sort of a way to kind of extend your career and maybe get, you know, one last opportunity, uh, somewhere else. And I, you know, I'm all for more football. I just, I just haven't watched that much of it. I'm definitely not anti USFL. So if, if I'm sounding like that, my apologies. I can't uh, find anything. You can't find anything. This is the biggest, uh, Pittsburgh Mahler fan I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like I'll, I'll be watching like. So, like, if I'm watching, like, an FS1 show or something, I just see the thing on the bottom. And when they make a co commercial for, like, the Maulers versus the, you know, the Spikes or I don't know, what, whatever it is, you're like, or when they say, like, Michigan taking on Birmingham, and you're like, what? Like, uh, okay. But it, it just, it doesn't roll off the tongue because you just don't know who these programs are or anything yet. Uh, but thank you for that one, Alex. Can I, uh, can I name you? I got, I'm going to name three. I have the teams here. I'm going to name three. One is going to be made up. Okay. Can you can you guess which one is made up? Uh, I will do my best. Okay. Okay. Houston Gamblers, New Jersey Generals, New York Raiders. 
Uh, I think the New York one's fake. Yes. Yes. Nice. What did you call it? The Pop New York? quiz. They're all fake. <laughs> <laughs> no, those other two are real. Uh, New York Raiders. I couldn't think of anything really that. Uh, yeah, that was pretty lame. Fake one. Like you okay. kind of like pointed out. The, all uh, right, let's move on. Uh, why don't we do a uh, YouTube question? Because I just put up a comment. Uh, question: Does Caleb Bullock uh, stay at safety or start uh, in the fall as a cornerback opposite Blackman? Interesting. Hmm. Interesting because he did play cornerback at the end of last spring. Yeah. Does have that capability. I'm going to say no, but I like the energy of how you're thinking. You like the, okay. I like the energy because you do have options sort of. You have Xavion coming back from injury. You have Latrell who, you know, he could also just do that flip-flop. He could go to cornerback as opposed to safety, but he's played a lot of safety in the spring. Then you have Zion Branch coming in. So yeah. you have those options. You have Bryson Shaw coming in. So you, you can play around with that. I, I don't I don't hate that energy. I'm sort of talking myself new it, but I'm going to say they're going to stick about, keep him at safety for right now. But I will acknowledge that if that does happen, you brought it up. What's his name? Uh, that was Anthony. Anthony. Thanks, I, Anthony. Wait, is that the guy buying me the drink? Uh, it might have been. Right? It was, it was Anthony, guy. right? I think so, yeah. I mean, um, Anthony's not the most uh, uh, uncommon name in the world, so could be. Nice. Uh, I think he stays at safety. Um, but I acknowledge it's <laughs> not a bad idea. All right. Acknowledge that. Let's go to another one. This is from Touchdown USC. Which players on the roster are best suited for the H-back position, Chris? Well, Tabarucci, we've talked about that. Jude Wolf has been playing the H-back her Malcolm Epps like a grown man. Yeah. Uh, so obviously him. I think Lake McCree, when he gets back, could be a very, very good H. You mm. know, that's sort of his uh, his bread and butter. He's not really a blocker. He's a weapon. You move around, mismatch, pass catcher. We saw what he could do in limited play last year. So that's a guy that I think we're going to w- want to look for at the H-back role. Obviously, he was banged up with the knee in spring. So when he gets back, hopefully he's healthy. I think that could be an interesting guy to see in that role. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you for those questions. Let's go to an email from Steve. I think having so many transfers can be an advantage in the future. Uh, as any thought of going to another program will be diminished by the rule of having to wait a year for a second transfer. So what Steve is referring to is you get the free one-time transfer and no matter what you haven't transferred yet, you can transfer and you can play right away. No matter what, there's a, just you can do it. If you try a second time, from what we were told, I wrote some stuff in the war room about this. You essentially have to apply for a waiver. Uh, it doesn't seem like that process is all that difficult or, um, is it, you know, it's not super hard to navigate through it. So if you did, you know, you know, transfer in and somewhere, and then you want to transfer again, I don't know if it's this lock, you know, like this, like, oh, you got to sit out a year now. Like, I I just don't think that we haven't seen a lot of it happening, but I don't think that's going to be as as big of a deterrent as you would would think it would be, because I feel like the appeal process is is a little more lenient. I don't don't know what you've heard, Chris. No, I mean, that's pretty much spot on. You get the one time transfer. If you want to do it again, you got to sit out. Um, I mean, this wasn't really a question, so. I don't know how to answer it, a non-question, but yeah, I mean, you better make your first decision right. I mean, it does sort of deter you from like looking elsewhere, but there's still kids who are going to do it yeah. that are, that are going to eat the, eat the sit out year. So, I mean, I think it's somewhat of an advantage. Yes. Cause if you, if you get that first one, you get them to use their one-time transfer on you, you know, they're less likely to want to want to sit out a year, but we're going to see that happen regardless. Yeah. Uh, before we, uh, we got a couple more left, but if you're watching us live or, you know, Hey, hit that like button on YouTube, smash it, just smash it once though. So you keep the like, so like us, please subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we have one last email and I think we'll go to a couple more questions from the, the live audience. Frank in Sacramento sent us a YouTube video. We can't, I guess I could have downloaded it and played it on the YouTube channel, but, um, I'm not gonna do that. He said, FYI, this email includes a link to highlights from the Oklahoma versus Oregon Alamo Bowl last fall. The best player for Oklahoma, of course, was Caleb Williams. 
The best player for Oregon was Travis Dye. The good news is they're both now at USC. It's kind of cool when you think about it that way, Chris. I mean, people have pointed this out. I don't appreciate that you called on me when I was looking at my phone. Oh, sorry. I felt like a, uh, I, I got flashbacks to high school, like you're my English teacher or something. Break down uh, the sentence I just described to you, Chris. Yeah. yeah. So what we can say is uh, with the Pac-12 revenue stream is that's what you're talking about, right? Yes. <laughs> no, I mean, you you have the two best players from that, that Alamo Bowl. Kudos to you. I, I, I really don't know what to say. Caleb Williams, yeah. Heisman contender, Travis Dye. Look for to be an all a first team all pack twelve running back. So it sort of just puts things in perspective, right? It's just, how quickly things change. And if you're like, who would be? Uh, we're talking about NIL stuff, like you know, Bijan Robinson getting in the Lamborghini deal. Who would be like the most high profile college football athletes in the Pac twelve right now? I mean, I think Caleb Williams instantly is number one. Um, he's got the Beats deal. He's got these other deals. Like I think. He's the guy that has the most national cachet. I just, you you feel like he's the man. Number two could probably be Jordan Addison. Like he's the dude that has hardware, right? He's won the Belitnikov. He comes in and, you know, I expect there be some deals and stuff for him too. USC's roster is just so different. So like we talked about this earlier, just, it's so different from, you know, they didn't go to a bowl game. They're four and eight, but uh, you know, the, one of the more prominent bowl games in the Pac-12, the two best players from that game are now on USC's roster, and they didn't USC didn't play in that game. So that that kind of stuff is like, all right. Um, I just want you to. I just want to point out that you mentioned two DMV guys. Uh, oh, nice. Did I? Oh yeah. Uh, going back. Uh, let's do football for life. Uh, I had a question cool. on YouTube. Out of the freshmen coming in this summer. Who makes the biggest immediate impact? Good question. Branch, Rayleigh Brown. Who do you like? I mean, I just, just a quick plug. I did a whole breakdown of every fresh incoming freshman, my summer enrollee report. So you can check those out on newspeople.com. They are free. So uh, check them out. But the three top ones are Zion Branch, Rayleigh Brown, and Atticus Bertram's. Now you're mm-hmm. thinking, who is Addix Bertrand's? Well, he is a punter from Australia who no one has ever seen before. Just want to point that out. Yeah. No one has ever laid eyes on him. I have talked to him on Instagram, so I at least sort of maybe talked to him. Who knows? I don't know who's behind that. But Atticus Bertrams is, I don't want to say shoe in, but he's looking like he'll be the starter uh, this fall. So I don't think you can get much bigger impact than being a starter. Uh, for this for this team in 2022, so I would say on a technicality, probably him. <laughs> yeah. But Zion Branch or Relic Brown, right there too. I expect Branch to play. I expect Relic Brown to play. Uh, obviously, it's a little more crowded on offense for Relic because of all the changes that have ho- come on, all the weapons they brought on when he first committed. People were like, "Oh, Relic Brown, feature feature weapon in this offense." Now it's a little different. You know, you got Jordan Addison, you got um, Mario Williams, you got Brendan Rice, you got. Carl Bynum, you got Kyle Ford, you got Travis Dye, Austin Jones, Darren Barlow. You have all these weapons that they need to use in mouths to feed. A true freshman like really Brown, I feel like he's going to have some sort of role. They're going to find ways to get him the ball. He's a dynamic weapon. Uh, he's a he's that joystick back where he can move to slot. Yep. So he'll find ways. Got to learn the offense. Same with Branch, but Branch looks like a dude right away. So I would rank it Bertram's Branch Relic. That's how I'm ranking it. Only because it looks like Atticus, Atticus will be a starter, the right. starting punter. I put a comment up there that who starts a punter? I saw that we got a Juco transfer. He's not a Juco transfer. Um, uh, Garth White is a Juco transfer. The, the Garth White. Oh, but uh, yeah, he's not. But Bertram's going to be the starter. Right. Yeah. Garth is more of a depth guy who can back up at kicker or uh, punter. Yeah. He's a dual five star. He's a five, Raiders five star. Uh, per the uh, kicker punter ranking. So not bad. preferred walk on, not scholarship, but I expect him to provide depth at both spots. We got uh, Scott saying, is the new California law going to help getting offensive and defensive linemen and five-star players? Um, there's no new law. Like there was a proposal that 
failed, right? Like, died. Yeah, it's dead. So Scott, there's none of that. Um, Andrew, uh, who do you guys think will be the most impactful transfer? I mean, Caleb Williams. Like, what? Do we, should we say outside of Caleb? Yeah, if we're saying outside of Caleb and outside <laughs> of Addison and outside of Mario, I, I feel like it's Shane Lee. Shane Lee. You know, Bobby Haskins is healthy. We haven't seen him take a snap. Well, so. I'm just saying, if he's healthy, what all a Pac-12. terrible answer. That if is. he's a all Pac-12 caliber left tackle, I think that's a pretty big uh, win. Gentry. Such a bad answer. Gentry. <laughs> Gentry. Uh, Malachi. Uh, Malachi. Makai uh, uh, Blackman. We're forgetting about Makai Blackman. There's a lot of options. There are options. But if you're just taking away Caleb, it's Jordan Addison and... That's it. Right. Like, I don't That's it. That's it. <laughs> we had. Um, Give us parameters. Yeah. You need a little more parameters. parameters. Like, dial it in a little. Uh, Ira wrote in. So, I need to play this on YouTube. He says, use the beam me down transporter sound effect from Star Trek for the transfer portal sound effect you're looking for. That's a good idea. We We've know. talked about that, right? Like, would that be good? Like, when I, I think I mentioned that we need a portal sound. Right. What so, he's that saying is... use, like, the transporter. The transporter. Maybe that's what he's referring to. He's like, oh, I got the perfect sound. Right. I think that's what he's referring to. I uh, I don't think we played this last week. So for my podcast of champions, um, you know, we kind of make joking. We joke around that USC is the Death Star again. And, um, you know, the Death Star is back up and running because Lincoln Riley's running the show. Oh, they just got the Belidnikov Award winner. Oh, they got the best, you know, Oregon's best player. They got Stanford's best, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um and so I made like a drop uh, for, they're mostly used for the podcast of champions, especially when David Woods, my co-host, who's a UCLA guy, uh, gets a little salty because USC's, uh, you know, just killing everything. So here's my drop that I made. The blast came from the Death Star. That thing's operational. Let the heat flow through you. It's a little long for a drop, but I thought it would be appropriate. It's your and, show. You can do what you want. That's very true. Uh, I can kind of do whatever I want there. But I thought that, <laughs> But hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed that. Okay. Uh, I think that's a good... That's good. I think uh, we went just over an hour. Um, I love the the live part. The inter Thank you, everyone, for watching. If you're watching live, I think we had over... I hated it. But I'm like, glad you loved it. We had like 175 people like watching live. 175 people. What are you guys doing? <laughs> it's like it's like <laughs> the middle of the work day. <laughs> oh my goodness. We have a lot of people that you know have free times. I guess I, good. I appreciate it. But what are you guys doing, man? What <laughs> when we would do so we did the simulcast. It would we were essentially broadcasting it live to YouTube, but we would make it um unlisted so private, you couldn't see it. So people couldn't watch it live, but it was a quick way to kind of upload the show to YouTube. And, you know, essentially what we're doing now is the same thing, but we just made it public so you could come watch. And I love the, the be able to interact with, um, you know, listeners and you know viewers while we're going and putting their comments up on the screen. Maybe we'll do it on our Facebook page too and, and Twitter as well. I don't know. We'll just, you know, keep expanding this, but it's sort of like a mini tunnel vision. Part of the reason is I feel bad because I was traveling for a wedding last weekend. I'm actually going... Like I told Chris, I'm going fishing this weekend, like a big fishing trip in Mexico. I'm trying to get some bluefin tuna, so, so I'm not going to be able to do... A, flexing on everyone. I don't know, but I won't be able to do the Sunday night show. Um, and I was like, well, we could do like a Wednesday night show. I'm like, well, why don't we just do our podcast and do it, you know, like a Tunnel Vision thing. And then hopefully come back. But let us know if you want us to do Tunnel Vision on different days. Sometimes the off season. If there was some big, big news, uh, for sure, we could do another Tunnel Vision. But we'll, we'll try to do more of those. But in the meantime, I think these are kind of fun. You're not going to get as many people watching on a Wednesday afternoon as you would uh, Sunday night. But we do appreciate all of you that were watching uh, all this live and everyone that's watched it uh, on replay and listened to the show. Um, you guys are right. We do this. You guys make the show. Uh, I love having questions be a part of what we do. And uh, it's great. So leave us a... We're almost to a thousand five uh, reviews. Not five-star reviews, but... Uh, we're like 22 reviews short of a thousand for the Peristyle podcast. So if you're on the Apple podcasting app, take the Apple podcasting app, go to the Peristyle podcast, boom, leave a five-star review, say something funny, say something mean to us, whatever you want to do, but we're almost to a thousand. So we'd really appreciate it if you could get in there and get us to uh, four digits. Any last words, Chris? 
before we sign off? I oh, Rain of Troy is filming a podcast right now. Are they really? You, you shamed them into it. They're doing it right did now. They know, so. Did like I, I was gonna say like well they wouldn't have known but they could have known they, they could have known they could have known they could have been watching as of thirty minutes ago they're filming I don't know if that has any correlation but I'm just saying you shade them the return of the podcast people, well people ask us so they don't record a show we're recording shows and they're like hey where's Random Troy like it's because they're like know, we're recording shows it's like they're our sister pod. Uh, they definitely, and they're friends of ours. They just got married. You know, they're doing different jobs. I get it. Like, you know, but people like, and, and it's fine. Just, you know, behind the, the curtain a little bit. I've been doing this a long time. You know, they were newer. Like Michael, when he was a kid, used to come to our tailgate parties that we had on campus and stuff. So he remembers like me as like this dude, whatever, like at the tailgate parties when he was like a kid with his dad. Um, and they were always so genuinely, uh, when we would talk, just, really appreciative of any time that I would give them. And I always told them like, I, you know, I thought they do a really good job producing their show and it's, you don't have to be the Parastel podcast. You don't have to be any other podcast. You just have to be yourself. And I liked what they were doing and you know, every show is going to be different. It's about personalities. Yeah. We're all talking, you know, we could be talking about different subjects, but you know, anyone talking about USC football, me and Chris, we're gonna have a different personality than Alicia and Michael or when Keely and I would do it or Dan Weber or, Harvey Hyde, like the shows kind of they end up being about what your personalities are. And uh, I, I just told them to embrace it. And they've been, you know, they're, it's a very popular podcast and uh, hope they can get back uh, doing them again because I did enjoy listening to those. But all right, we don't need to plug other people's podcasts this much, but I did shame them for not recording and I guess they're doing it now. So that's good. But thank you all for listening to the Parasol Podcast, wa watching uh, this simulcast of the podcast on YouTube. Hope you enjoyed the show and we will talk to you next time.